In this movie, I want to show you how to format cell properties. Cell properties are used when you want to format the properties of individual cells. Now, we talked about table properties several times now, which you bring up by choosing table properties. And you can do things like set the border color and the background color of the entire table. But we can also set cell properties. So, for instance, if I just click inside a single cell, like the 2006 cell here, and I right-click, I can bring up table cell properties. Also, you can just come up to the table menu and bring up table cell properties this way, too. That takes us to the cell tab of table properties. And in here, you can see we can set horizontal alignment, vertical alignment, background color, and wrap text. First option is horizontal alignment. Now, it's currently set to default, yet it looks centered in here. And the reason was this was actually formatted incorrectly. Notice when I click in here that the center alignment button is selected. I'm going to click that to deselect it. And then it goes to its default position of going to the left. Now, it's not really incorrect to use these alignment buttons here, but generally when you're working within a cell, it's better to use the actual cell properties to set your alignment. That way, if you have multiple paragraphs in a cell, for instance, and let's say you have a title followed by three paragraphs within a table cell, if you want the majority of the cell to be aligned to the left like it is right now, you can set the cell properties for the horizontal alignment to be to the left. But if you just want the title to be centered, then you can still use the button up here to center just that title. But as a general rule, it's better to set the properties of the cell first before you use these buttons up here. So actually, it's the same case here, so I'm going to fix that. Like so. Okay. So I'm going to right-click on this again and bring up Table Cell Properties. And we have Horizontal Alignment. The default is to the left, but notice we can choose left or choose center and apply. And choose right and apply. In this case, I probably want it in the center, so I'll just go ahead and leave it like that. Another kind of alignment that you have available in table cells that you don't normally have when you're not working in a table is vertical alignment. You can choose whether you want the content of the cell to be aligned to the top of the cell, to the middle of the cell, like so, or the bottom of the cell. Really depends on the design you're going for, but this is where you set it. In this case, I like to keep it in the middle, so I'm going to apply that. We also have the option for setting a background color, which I can do here. And you can just select from any one of these colors here. Apply that, like so. Now, you also have the option of wrap text. Now, I can't really show you this in this particular cell because I only have a small bit of text in here. Let me just click OK. I'm going to click inside Merchandise Sales over here and bring up Cell Properties. If there's too much text to fit on one single line within the cell, you can allow it to wrap. If you don't want it to wrap, uncheck that option, click Apply, and you can see now all the text in that cell where it says Merchandise Sales all appears on one line, which increased the width of the column. But if that's what you're going for, you can make sure that the text never wraps in the cell by unchecking wrap text. So those are the options that we have available for cell properties. Now you can also apply cell properties to multiple cells at the same time. So if I wanted to format all the elements in this top row together, I just select them all, bring up cell properties. And in here, notice now I have this keep current option because there's different alignments for each one of these items here, but if I want to make them all the same, like I want them to be centered, and in the middle, I can do that. And if I want them all to be the same color, I can do that as well. Notice when I have an entire row selected, I have row height, so I have the options here to fit contents or make the row height a certain amount of pixels. I also have the option of making this text wrap or not, like we did before. And I can assign this to be a header row, which generally makes your text bold and centered within the table cells. So that's actually appropriate for this because this is the header row, so I'll leave it like that. So when you select individual cells, you'll see cell properties. When you select an entire row or column, you'll see row or column properties. Now one last thing to mention here, and the reason that shifted is because I set this to be a header row and that automatically centered merchandise cells in there. But one last thing to mention in here is that the color that you set cells will always override the color of the entire table. So now if I bring up Table Properties, and I set a background color for the entire table, like say this color here, and apply that, notice that the top row did not change colors. So that's important to note. The cell properties, at least the colors, are always going to override the table properties.